Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. discuss about uh, chemical propellants and the question is what do you mean by propellant? Propellant basically it will be consisting of fuel and oxidizer, right. But apart from that there will be some additives. Now why we need to add additives and other things as you go along we will see. But if when you talk about fuel, fuel can be of course, you know it can be solid, it can be liquid, right. It can be gaseous as well, we have seen. And similarly, oxidizer also can be both or any phase as a matter of fact, we can use combination of that also, sometimes liquid and solid and solid and gas. Like uh, if you look at the fuels, I have given some examples, but as you go along we will learn more about it. That is basically, if you look at uh, like hydrocarbon, hydrogen and polymer and cellulose, you know like cellulose we use, is not it? like in your food and other things, like can it be used as a fuel, you know, right. And oxidizer like oxygen of course, you know like which is there in air, we use for combustion purposes in the, I think, but it can be used in uh, as a chemical propellant, chlorine, fluorine, ammonia, ammonium perchlorate, nitric acid, several of them we can use as oxidizer. As I told you earlier that oxidizer can be you know, like act as a fuel. In some places, see, if you remember in the beginning I told whenever you use fluorine, you know any other things will be become a fuel, even oxidizer itself will be a fuel for the fluorine and additives, right. But before really getting into this all constituents and what are the additives and why you will use additives, let us look at the properties, you know, of the propellant which will help us to choose. If you look at, we will be discussing about solid and liquid propellant, but keep in mind that uh, each propellant will be having certain specific characteristics properties, right, which we will not be discussing now, but as you go along I will be telling sometimes. But what we will be looking at is the common properties, of course, sometimes I will be specifying. For example, a propellant must have a higher heat of combustion or to get the high heat release rate, because that is very important, you know. And you keep in mind that the amount of heat being released per unit volume in case of rocket engine is much higher as compared to your burner, even gas turbine engine, right. So therefore, uh, it is very important to have a high calorific value, so that you can have a higher heat release rate. And also, it must have a higher gas temperature, because after it is getting burned, the chamber temperature must have be, must be much higher. Why? Because then we can have a higher characteristic velocity. We have already derived the relationship for characteristic velocity, right, which will be uh, give you the specific impulse. Higher specific impulse is a mandate, it is a requirement for a better performance of the rocket engine. And beside this molecular mass, you know like uh, basically the molecular mass or the molecular weight must be lower. We have seen in the expression of thrust coefficient like you know it comes as a inversely proportional to the molecule. That means, if the molecular weight being lower, then average molecular weight of the gas which will be expanding in the nozzle then you will get a higher specific thrust, of course, for the same time pressure and other level. And uh, the another very important thing what is that we always have you know high lower specific gravity. And uh, to reduce this uh, what you call um, molecular weight of the gas, average molecular weight of the gas, generally hydrogen, oxygen you know being preferred and which will give you the higher specific impulse. And propellant density, 
will be much be higher so that it will be compact it may be valid for your what you call liquid fuel and solid fuel particularly for the solid fuel because the storage space is very important the density will be higher that means it will be uh, compact in the same you know volume like a mass will be higher so that you can have kind of things and your uh, chamber volume of the liquid propellant will be reduced if you are using a, a higher density propellant. So, therefore, it is very important the stability of the fuel and oxidizer is very important. For example, you have kept some propellant right and when you are firing it is become unstable it is you know whether the solid or the liquid. For example, sometimes we are trying to add some aluminum particle to the kerosene what we use. But you know the, the particles what we are using basically to augment the characteristics combustion characteristics of the fuel. Now, if it is separated out, if it is you know not really settling down in the liquid, then naturally you will be in deep trouble, right. So, therefore, the stability of the fuel and oxidizer is very important, you know, like uh, people keep this propellant for ages together to winning a war, you know, they will be storing the propellant solid propellant right. And suppose by the time they fire you know it is not firing it is unstable then it will be a problem. And beside this storability is very important whether you could store or not properly whether leakage is there or whether it is a vapor pressure and other things one has to look at it. So, corrosiveness and toxicity suppose there is a leakage there is a toxic or people are handling you know people will be handling the liquid fuel and other things particularly if it is toxic then it is a big problem. And last but not least is the cost because you know economy drives the everything. So, therefore, cost is very important to reduce the running cost you know of the these things. And there is a castability there are several other properties which will be specific to the uh, uh, solid uh, propellant kind of things and so also the liquid propellant. <coughs> so, now let us look at the, the solid propellant now. The solid propellant can be broadly divided into two categories. One is double base propellant or what we call homogeneous propellant right and other is your composite propellant. But however, in recent time you know there are another two kinds of them come up like one is the composite modified double base propellant right and uh, there is another one nitramine propellant nitramine propellants you know like it will be basically nitramine based the RDX. You know this our uh, you know RDX being used by the terrorist group kind of things they are very much familiar with that do you know what it is anybody because it is coming in newspaper you must be knowing I guess. What is the full form of RDX is basically research development explosive right. And what is HMX? High melting explosive. That means we are doing research to produce the explosive so that you know other people, <laughs> antisocial elements, you know, can use that for their winning a war against the people, you know, right? And creating havoc. That means we need to be very, very particular about that. Not, you know, it is important to generate knowledge, but at the same time we should know how to use it properly. Right. So, so if you look at, I mean, one can say that uh, double base propellant, which is homogeneous propellant, also. That means both the fuel, like one example, nitrocellulose, right? Other is nitroglycerin, right? Which can be combined together and used. It is like your premixed flame. Premixed flame means fuel and oxidizer mixed together before combustion takes place, right? Yes or no? So. I can really make a one fuel which will be containing the you know oxidizer and which will be containing the fuel together and you will get. Therefore, we call it homogeneous propellant composite is the heterogeneous propellant right which will be having you know their own identity right. Own identity in the sense you know like each suppose there is a fuel and there is a oxidizer I am talking about solid propellant they will be having together right it is like your motor motor you know 
motor like you use for your uh, you know um, concrete making right okay there will be granules there will be cement there will be sand all together it's having own identity right there is having a surface their own identity but if i mix together right and cast it it's like a you know one itself you cannot identify physically right that is homogeneous propellant and composite modified double double breast propellant and i have already told you rdx and mhmx which are example of nitramine so typical double base propellant right will be like this one is nitrocellulose which will be containing 13.25 percent of nitrogen and 51.4 percent of weight and it is basically a polymer polymer you know is a fuel we use a lot of polymer in our even in the third you know we will be having some polyurethane and other things right plastic so and nitroglycerin which is basically a liquid and it is explosive plasticizer and which is a oxidizer the percentage wise is 42.93 there are several additives so if you look at 1 2 3 4 5 five additives are being added but if you look at their percentage are very very small as compared to the fuel and as compared to the nitroglycerin which is oxidizer so diethyl phthalate is 32 percent and which is used as a non explosive plasticizer to mechan to remove or to improve sorry improve the mechanical properties why you need to have mechanical properties because it will be subjected to a lot of stress high pressure because uh, you know in the propellant will be uh, subjected to a very high pressure and uh, if you look at uh, the ethyl centralite which is again stabilizer to counter act the auto catalytic effect decomposition of a major constituent that might be some you know because of high temperature it will be some constituent will be auto catalytic so therefore you need to avoid it otherwise it will be explosive you cannot control so potassium sulfate which is 1.2 percent it it means to promote the smooth burning at the low temperature like at temp low temperature then you know the propellant may not burn that is a big problem so therefore you need to have a smooth burning therefore it, and carbon black you know which is being used is basically 0.2 percent that is to add it to the trans uh, to make it transparent uh, to tr to make the transparent propellant for preventing the transmission of radiation energy which may cause internal ignition around the internal voids or the impurities that means if you look at if it will be difficult to uh, really look at it what it will be i think you people are may not be getting i will tell you see this is basically a double best propellant right okay it is contains the nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin if you look at this is having a hole here right this is the surface and this kind of burning is known as what you call side burning grain right this is the grain basically which we will be discussing little later on right so therefore and this is contains all the constituent whatever you know one can think of fuel oxidizer and additive together this is the propellant and then generally this is a double base propellant and if you look at candela uh, candelilla wax which is used you know in a very low percentage act as a lubricant for extrusion process because what i have showed you it actually one has to be extruded various shapes you want to have as you go along we will see it is a cylindrical one that might be a star shape there might be several other shapes we will get right so <coughs> what uh, i was telling that this is basically about the solid propellant kind of things and uh, the uh, what you call double breast propellant if you look at the chemical formula is basically c3h5 no2 in the bracket 3 that is nitroglycerin which is basically a liquid but when you together it became solidified whenever it will come to the uh, nitrocellulose right that is c6s7o2 no2 bracket so there is a composite propellants like a composite propellant is basically you know it can be fuel it can be oxidizer right it is heterogeneous nature this is the one what is being used is uh, STPB, which is being used by uh, or uh, in India, like hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene, right? 
and CTPB, which is similar in nature, is basically a, a polymer kind of thing, carbonyl terminated polybutadiene, right. And uh, there are modern polymer, there are several other things like, you know, polysulfides, polyesters, you know, like polyesters we use for our cloth and other places, epoxy, polyurethane, poly, you know, uh, size xylene and polybutadiene, as I already told you, you know, basically STP, VCTB, which is being used and uh, polystyrene, polyxylogen and phenolic cellular resin, several and varieties of them. This is also sometimes known as the binder, you know, it will bind the oxidizer molecule. So, therefore, it is together, you know, and it can be. And there are several metals which are being used, but those will be in some, you know, very, very less quantity to augment the, uh, what you call the burning rate, like aluminum, magnesium, boron, metal hydrate, several other, I mean, like can be there. I will just show you like oxidizers, you know, which are common oxidizers. There might be n number of oxidizers, you know, solid propellant. One is potassium percolate and ammonium percolate, you know, which is being popularly used. Like uh, uh, if you look at oxygen percentage generally, potassium percolate 46 percent, and it is a quite high density 2491.19 kg per meter. Thing. Ammonium percolate and 34 percent, of course, it is being used and this density is 1937. But beside this like ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate, lithium percolate is being used, but temperature if you look at highest is basically potassium percolate, next is lithium percolate, which is not being very much used, but the ammonium percolate is being used very much even like you know, it has to be used for explosive purposes. So, as I told you, RDX is also is being used is a combined, it is a cyclo trimethylene trinitramine, right. And uh, the HMX is basically cyclo tetraethylene tetranitramine, right. And the formula is similar instead of here it is CS2 bracket 3, HNO2 bracket, you know, like in the bracket is 3, but here it is the 4. So, let us uh, start this lecture 38 with a thought process from Albert Einstein, which states that great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from the mediocre minds. It is a very profound statement, let me not dwell upon it and let us recall what we had learnt in the last lecture. We had basically learnt about the how to you know take care of performance parameter like your what we call characteristics velocity and we have derived relations with, uh, relationship for that. And then we moved into how to relate this thrust coefficient with the characteristics velocity and find out the ISP specific impulse, right. And then of course, we can get thrust from the thrust coefficient and then pressure, chamber pressure and you know knowing the throat area, we can get the thrust relationship. Beside this, we also looked at two other parameters. One is combustion efficiency, which is basically ratio of characteristic velocity actual divided by characteristic velocity ideal. Ideal you can uh, get from the basically the relation whatever we have derived, but actually you can measure the temperature and then you know other parameters and then you can do that. And beside this effectiveness of the thrust coefficient, we have also looked at it. And after that, we moved into the propellants. In propellant, we looked at propellant, you know, general characteristics, then we looked at solid propellant. What we will be doing now is basically looking at the liquid propellants. Liquid propellants basically can be classified into two categories. One is hypergolic propellant, right hypergolic propellant means self igniting. That means, you need not to give any ignition energy for initiating the combustion. Do not you think it will be very, you know, hazardous to do that, right? Because if I will have two, one is fuel and oxidizer or, you know, then it will just go, then it will be, it will start reacting. Then it is a very, you know, dangerous thing to handle. But uh, that is also being used and non hypergolic propellant, where you need to provide the ignition energy, requisite amount of ignition energy, right. 
So, therefore, it can be broadly defined by hypergolic and non hypergolic and hypergolic propellant both the hypergolic and the non hypergolic can be divided to one you know basically one can monopropellant and bipropellant. Of course, there is a tripropellant as well, but I am not discussing about it. So, the monopropellant in case of hypergolic, I have taken two examples. Monopropellant means it is a single propellant where both single propellant liquid propellant where both the fuel and oxidizer will be together. This is a very you know uh, example is hydrogen peroxide. Now, if how it will react then right, if it will reacting then it is difficult to handle, but what is that? It can react at a high temperature that is one thing and other thing is that it will react when it even in the uh, you know ambient temperature right it can react whenever it will come in contact with the what you call catalyst right so therefore the catalyst catalyst being used for like example platinum and then magnesium and some other things right platinum is being preferred although it is very costly if you you know react with that in presence of that you know S 2 O 2 will be decomposed into hydrogen and oxygen and it will be giving certain amount of heat, but this amount of heat what is being released during this reaction is very, very low. Generally, it will give you around ISP of 147. Now, question arises where you will use? This use monopropellant because the reliability is more, so therefore, it is being used for the small you know thrust level applications or the smaller particularly altitude control or you are having a satellite and it you will have to put into another you know um, orbit corrections and other things then you will be using. And hydrogen is uh, also being used and uh, you know as a monopropellant the, and whenever it will be coming in contact with the iridium you know uh, uh, a catalyst of course, those catalysts are being uh, placed on the surface of the alumina particles, you know, particles or in a uh, conduits and other things, but generally particles are being used as a surface area. So, then <coughs> it will be decomposed into ammonia and then hydrogen and then you know other things, right. And I uh, will be discussing about that. So, those things will release heat and you will get the also ISP very much. So, beside this, if you look at uh, the bipropellant under this hypergolic condition, UDMH unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrogen, right, RFNA, that is basically a red fuming nitric acid. When they come together, and you know, it will be liquid phase, and when they will come together, they will start reacting at the liquid phase, okay. And then, of course, it will vaporize and then heat will release, and then you will get the even gas phase reaction. So, similarly, nitrogen tetraoxide and uh, what you call and uh, nitric uh, acid when it they will come in contact, they will also start igniting itself. So, therefore, hypergolic propellant you know can be there are several other varieties, but I have taken two of examples and uh, these are being used routinely in case of your uh, what you call uh, rocket engines. The monopropellant, if you look at it, can be have you know again divided into two categories whenever we are discussing about non hypergolic propellant. One is simple, where fuel and oxidizer in the same molecule, for example, methyl nitrate, right. Methyl nitrate, you know, it is a very, very explosive. You know what will be the its detonation velocity? It will be something 8000 meter per second, it is quite high value. Right. If you look at methyl nitrate, it is very easy to make. Of course, it is simple, but it is very dangerous to do that. You take a nitric acid and alcohol, right, methyl alcohol, and then you put together and then you will get that. But again, you will have to do some water will be coming into pictures and then you will have to condense it and then get that. But it is a quite a dangerous and which is being used, and one has to be careful about this methyl nitrate. Right and composite that means mixture of oxidizer and fuel because if you look at this all fuel and oxidizer in the methyl nitrate in the molecule itself, but here you are making a you know mixture, mixture of uh, nitric acid and amyl acetate 
and then you know you will have to give energy you know like some kind of ignition energy because it is basically non hypergonic arm. And beside this the bipropylene there are several varieties. I have taken a example as a liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen which is being used here and liquid uh, hydrocarbons and then UDMH even you can use unsymmetric dimethyl as an MMH, monomethyl hydrogen and other things you can use. So, as I told you that in the presence of catalyst like a platinum, Ag and Fe2O3 that is ferric oxide, magnesium oxide, several others, you know one can really decompose this not you know hydrogen peroxide and also hydrogen, but hydrogen generally it is being what you call whenever it will come in contact with iridium catalyst right and uh, then nitrogen uh, what you call hydrogen tetra hydride will be converted into 2 N S 3 plus S 2 and N S 3 will be again converted into 2 S 2 plus N 2 right. And keep in mind whenever you are using catalyst there are several other poisoning of catalyst and then there will be also a gas will be heat will be released in the pores, pressure will be released. There are several complexities which I am not getting into it and uh, those things has to be looked at. And it is as I told you it is mostly used for small rocket for alti altitude and attitude control. And as I told you that UDMH and RF F N A is being used for your what to you call the liquid fuel kind of things, right. And the, the common what to call the common liquid, I have just taken some example like liquid oxygen, which is being used for a cryogenic engine along with the liquid hydrogen, and one can use also hydrogen oxide as a another liquid, and of course, some other uh, kind of a fuel one can use and HNO3 that is the red fuming nitric oxide and white fuming nitric oxide WFNA both are being used you know as oxidizer along with several fuel like saturated unsaturated hydrocarbon some of the examples is you know kerosene that is your uh, what you call research uh, propellants and then amines, alcohols, several other one can think of. And besides the tetranitromethane which is being used you know for as an oxidizer and it can be go with the borens with several varieties one can think of like your hydrocarbon C N H 2 N plus 2 or some other things it can be like that several of them like nitrogen peroxide which can be you know like as oxidizer and liquid fluorine as oxidizer and if you look at this ammonia and hydrogen UDMH unsummit dimethyl hydrogen MMH aniline you know like which is being and uh, dine is being also used as a liquid fuel several of them. But we uh, in India basically people are using UDMH and hydrogen I think and nowadays of course, people are uh, trying to get this liquid hydrogen liquid oxygen kind of and the organometallic which is a very you know uh, good one which is coming up. So, let us look at a optimum performance of some of the bipropylenes you know just to give you a flavor that is liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen if I take and oxidize the flavor mass ratio and adiabatic temperature I will get 3 to 5 1 Kelvin. Of course, actual temperature will be little lower and you will get that C star that is a characteristic velocity 2 3 8 6 and ISP you will get the highest that is 455. Of course, this is the ideal one actual one will be little lower than that. You see if you look at whatever number I have put it is all ideal done from the what you call calculation right. So, liquid oxygen and liquid methane you can have a little much lower characteristic velocity therefore, ISP is lower. And uh, if you look at fluorine and hydrogen you know it is what you call the highest this is ISP, but it is never being or it is rarely being used because of fluorine you know it is difficult to handle. So, other things like nitrogen tetraoxide, UDMH and N2H4, the hydrogen 50 percent this is being used in India for 342 kind of things and then other things. So, having talked about this propellant, now we will have to look at the solid propellant rocket engines. If you look at what are the you know like uh, parts one can think of like we know there will be casing right, there will be grain I have told you and you need to have insulator, we can have igniter and of course, you know like 
once it is fired rocket engine, it has to be terminated if it is there. That means, we should have a way of means of terminating liquid uh, thrust terminator and nozzle. So, these are the constituents. So, uh, if I look at a, a diagram, you know, if you look at this is basically your casing, you know, this is your casing, right. And this is we call grain. Grain is basically consists of propellant. I have showed you a grain, right, where it is having certain structures, right. And insulator is given because you know it should heat should not go away and also it should not get burnt in the, in the towards the end, right. That is also. And uh, this is having a nozzle which is throat area and this is a thrust terminator and igniters. So, that is to initiate the combustion. And this is a basically end burning rate. Keep in mind when you start, unless you develop the pressure, you cannot really have a thrust, you cannot really burn it. For the example, like we must have a diaphragm here. I will be showing a diagram where we will see that there is a diaphragm here, and when I ignite it, uh, such that it will be burned, some heat will be released, and then it will not allow the gas to go through the nozzle to start with. So, that pressure will build up and then you will have a higher burning rate that we will see little later on, but I am just telling beforehand that how it is igniting. And this is the end burning grain and if you look at the side burning, the burning will be taking place in this zone, you know, over here. This is known as side burning grain and I will be discussing about this is the end burning. It is like a cigarette burning, you know, like the way you, where people use cigarette, you know, like it will be burning one way. Like if it is a cigarette, the burning is taking place. This is basically end burning grain. So, it is having the similar uh, you know components like casing, insulator, grain, igniter, thrust terminator and nozzle. Now, when you talk about that, what really is happening? What are the processes involved in the solid propellant? As I told you that it is basically when you are igniting, you are giving certain amount of initial energy, right. What it will be doing? It will be transfer, right, to the solid surface because it is very difficult to solid surface. How we ignite in a wood, do you know? How do we do? Of course, um, most of you might not be knowing how to ignite a wood. Would you know wood is a solid fuel, right? Because all of you are using LPG gas, just you go and you know click a button and you will get a flame, right? But to burn a wood is very difficult. You will have to need a, another flame with a, some kind of a uh, what you call uh, paper or a some other kind of a uh, what you call flame, right, candle or a wake flame and then help, because initial time takes time. Similarly, in this case, we will be using a igniter, which will give you some gas and some uh, particulate will be there also, right. So, if you look at what really is happening, suppose I am igniting somewhere here, that means some gases will be here, it will be going, right. And then it will be igniting here locally, right? Some particulate will go, hot particulate will go and impede into that person, right? That is one local ignition will be taking place. And let us say that what will happen after that flame is established? Let us say there is a flame. If you look at this, is basically a flame. If flame is established, right? Then what is happening? The you know heat is going, like if it is a heat, it can go by the radiation, right? Okay. And this radiation, there might be some surface, flame need not to be near to the uh, what you call this propellant. And when the heat will come, then there will be some melting may happen, you know, some liquid may be formed. You have might have seen when you were putting the wood into the fire, you will say that water is bubbling out, right, because water is there. In similarly, in this propellant, water will not be there, but there will be some constituent will be first converted into the liquid and then it is not that all the propellant will be there some this characteristic, but some of them. So, and then heat can be convected due to you know convection, right. It can come to the solid surface by con conduction and it can come by the radiation, right. When it comes, then what will happen? It will be trying to melt and sometimes it will be pyrolysis is occurring. What is this pyrolysis? Pyrolysis will be a process where you know the thermal degradation of the fuel will be taking place without really coming in contact with oxidizer or in the absence of oxidizer or in the very, very low per quantity of oxidizer. So, that is thermal degradation will be taking place 
and this will give to the gasification also, right. Gasification is the next phase where it will be converted solid into the gas that may be liquid which will be converted into again gas and then when it will go the fuel and oxidizer will be diffusing towards the flame and the flame will be and then will be coming over here. So, if you look at this is a very, very complex process that means, if you look at let us say this is your oxidizer right, this is your fuel that means, the fill portion and the granular portion is oxidized because generally in a if you look at composite propellants the binder is basically a fuel. Binder means this is which will be mixing together like your cement in a mortar you know it is a binder. So, similarly exothermic reaction degree if you look at it, it is a quite a complex process right. We need to know now how this surface is receding that means, this surface will be receding it will be going toward that as it time progresses it is getting consumed this solid fuel will be converted into the liquid and sometimes and directly to the vapor and the vapor will be there and it will participate in the combustion and the flame will be occur and once this flame is formed this flame will support the all combustion process make it self sustained right. But we need to understand like how much propellant is being burned because we need to you know look at the thrust because the thrust expression we know m dot p v e and of course, this portion is there. If I say that this is fully expanded nozzle right, I will get a thrust is m dot p into v e right and I need to know what is this m dot p that means, mass of the propellant which is passing or going through right, which is being generated due to the burning of the solid propellant. So, if you look at that is of course, for the timing we are saying that is you know like sorry that this propellant solid propellant is converted into gas. That means, whatever the solid is being converted into gas that is the mass flow rate of gas and which is nothing but rho p, rho p is the density of the propellant, a b is the surface area. If I take surface area and perpendicular to this you know plane, then I will get a whole surface area right and r dot is the regression rate. That means, the amount of the you know propellant is being regressed or reduced and keep in mind that this will be mm per second like or you can say centimeter per second. Generally, it is a very, very low rate at which it is being you know receded the surface. So, therefore, we call it as a uh, we use it mm per second. Keep in mind it will be always perpendicular to the surface, surface of the propellant. So, having done that question is how we will determine because if you look at the processes what is happening we have seen it is quite complex right it is quite complex and one can say look I will model it yes people have attempted to model but it is not that easy till today also people are struggling to get a you know model it a model prediction to be as good as experiment but still it is not that you know in a position to give you good result. But however, experiment being conducted keep in mind that in experiment being conducted under a steady state there is no flow conditions in actual situation flow will be there and several complex here it is a steady state. You use a burner which is a propellant here and having insulation it is having a propellant holder and it is in a chamber right and I can use this pressurize this chamber right with the help of nitrogen of course, controlling valve and ball valve right. First fill this chamber you know after installing this propellant in the propellant holder I can pressurize it and then I can ignite it ok. And when it is ignited this mass burning rate you know right will be going out where the propellant will be receding you know in this direction it is one dimensional almost one can assume then there will be increase in pressure. Now, I need to keep the pressure constant. So, there will be surge tank which will keep the pressure constant right whatever they being consumed whatever being produced the gas because the solid and it will be converted into gas that means, chamber pressure will increase. So, that will be taken care so that you can keep a constant pressure and you will be finding out you know what is the time it take from here you know to travel this distance this front of the propellant surface and how much time it will take right. It will take the length if I know this length and if I know the time right I can get what is this burning rate that it will be mm per second right. So,
So, by this way we can estimate, we can determine the regression rate of the burner. If you look at this is right, basically R dot it goes by A P C N. You can say that this is basically empirical relation, there might be some several other of them, right. But generally it is a well known and it is being used, but however literature is having also other relationships. We will be using this relationship in this course and it is known as Welles law and also it is known as St. Travers law. Keep in mind that A is a constant, it is not a constant, but you can you know get that as a combustion constant kind of things and which is a function of propellant temperature because temperature propellant will be having certain temperatures, right. And S is basically the combustion index, because it is the you know dependent on the pressure. Like if you look at what we are learning from here, the regression rate will be dependent on the chamber pressure, okay. That is and it is power to the n, n can be any value that we need to obtain from the experiment. Chronometer will tell you how much distance it travel and what is the time you can measure, right. Of course, there is a several other things have come up. You can take a photograph, you can have a wear and you can find out how much time it is taken for traveling certain distance. That will be basically is a chrono, I mean chrono means you know time wise kind of thing will come. So, if you look at A constant is basically A, this is a constant, right, T i is the uh, what you call self ignition temperature of the propellant and T p is the propellant temperature. And the P T p will be changing you know depending upon the environment, depending upon the other things whatever it is. But whereas, ignition self ignition temperature will be dependent on the type of propellant is being used right, it is remain same. So, basically if you look at A is not really a constant right, because T p will be varying, we will see that how it is varying, how it is affecting the regression rate. So, let us look at a typical data burning rate in centimeter per second versus the pressure. Keep in mind that pressure is plotted in the logarithm scale and burning rate also being plotted in a logarithm scale, right, that you should keep in mind. If you look at this double brace propellant, this is what you call nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin being generally used. And it is you know it is goes on increasing with pressure, but however, it is a very low value as compared to APCMD that is comp you know like a combined modified uh, double base propellant you know composite modified double base propellant right. If you look at that is a 20 percent and 150 microns and uh, the other one is your same thing, but it is having 30 percent AP and 150 microns. So, you get a higher you can think why not increase it further, but if you increase then the structural rigidity because ammonium percolate is a crystals you know like size will be dependent on that. Therefore, there is a limitation, but you can increase further to some extent not to a larger extent. And a very interesting thing you will see this is 150 micron or the average size diameter of the what AP particles right. But if I reduce to 18, you get a very higher burning rate, which is having similar behavior. So, far pressure is concerned. That means, if I go on reducing, that means, it is also depends on the particle size. People are now talking about nano particles, you know, because nanotechnology or nano, you know, science is coming up. So, people are doing research and they uh, will get a higher burning rate and always it is important to enhance the regression rate. At the same time, keeping this pressure index as a smaller one, why it is so, we will do, we will see in a moment, maybe you know this thing. So, if I will vary this you know T p and keeping this A as a constant and also T i ignition temperature, self ignition temperature for a particular propellant, if I plot this R dot and P c, you can see that when T p is 240, you will see that this is burning rate it is increasing, but it is having a low value as compared to the T p of 280 and 320 is having higher value. That means, it is indicating that propellant temperature also plays an important role in enhancing the regression rate for a particular chamber pressure, right. So, if you look at it is a function of various parameters and keep in mind that this relationship is semi empirical. 
means one has to be very careful about the units being used in that particular expression. It is not a generalized one, you must keep in that mind, right. So, uh, therefore, uh, one has to be very careful while using its unit and you should use the same unit whatever it is given, right, that you will have to be careful. And it will be good to have a predicting this regression rate, of course, lot of work is going on, but still it is in the or a what to call not a, in a mature state, I cannot say immature, not in a mature state. So, now if you look at we talked about this r dot a, a p c n and now question is the regression rate is a function of pressure, right, chamber pressure. Now, there might be several ways we have seen that you know ways one can think of. One is I am plotting here l n r with the l n p c, you will see there is a uh, the regression rate basically increases with the pressure, but after that it is remaining constant. That kind of thing is really very, very you know important to know and keep in mind this relationship will be valid for the which it is being you know obtained. That means, experiment is conducted for a certain pressure ratio, it will be valid for that. So, you find a very strange kind of problem like plateau burnings and similarly measure burning. That means, the regression rate increases and it decreases and people deliberately do that, because there is a something you are having a requirement, the thrust should increase, then you need to have a decrease, you can go for this or you have a thrust, you know uh, is a what do you call uh, increase thrust you need and then you will go on keeping the same thrust level. So, you can use a plateau. I will just summarize what we have learnt that burning rate or the regression rate, see I will be using this term interchangeably depends on the following condition. That is one is chamber pressure, because the gas phase reaction plays an important role in providing heat to the propellant burning surface and initial temperature of the propellant that is T p and it will be dependent on combustion gas temperature and very important thing which I did not discuss that is the flow of hot gases right, which will be for example, in a this thing suppose the propellant is burning you know and then the gases will come and it will be moving at certain velocities right. And this velocity, because it is moving some heat transfer will be taking place. So, that means, some convective heat transfer you know heat transfer will be taking place and that will affect the regression rate. Okay. So, that is known as erosive burning and we will be discussing little bit because you know I am not get getting into erosive burning or anything, but we will be discussing sometimes right. That also will affect the regression rate, which you cannot get you know in this expression. This expression you cannot get, because this is under the steady state, no flow is taking place right. So, therefore, that has to be conducted in actual rocket engines like this what I have shown. And uh, beside this motor acceleration and spinning, for example, motor is accelerating, it will be also affecting the regression rate right and spinning suppose it is moving and then taking a turn. So, that is also will be also affecting the uh, you, you know uh, uh, rocket irrigation rate kind of thing. So, we will look at this chamber pressure in a solid propellant rocket engine right, because we are interested to look at what is really happening in the uh, rocket engines kind of thing. But as I told you, there are two kinds of uh, you know burning grain. One can think of end burning grain, and then this is the. Uh, let us uh, consider that and gas being generated due to the burning surface. Because what will happen? This will be burning out. So when it is going, then some gas will be generated here, and it will be passing through the nozzle. This is your nozzle, right? It is passing through the nozzle. So if you look at the mass of the propellant which is getting burnt, which will be equal to rho p a b. This is your a b. If I take this cross section over here, I will get a surface. This is basically a b, right. And then r dot, the r dot is moving perpendicular to this. This is basically r dot, which will be moving, the surface is moving with a certain rate that we call a regression rate, which will be perpendicular to the surface that is r dot. And we have already using this relationship instead of r dot, it will be a p c n right. Now, 
and certain amount of mass flow rate which is passing through the nozzle because some being generated because of burning of propellant surface or the propellant and the gas is also going through the nozzle and we will assume for the time being or maybe most of the cases it is a choked one. So, we will say that what is the amount of mass flow rate will be passing through under choked condition. That is we have already derived that is A t p c root over r t c root over uh, you know gamma 2 by gamma plus 1 power to the gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma minus 1. You can say that this portion you know this portion is nothing but your capital gamma right. So, by striking a mass balance in the rocket engine we can say that the amount of mass accumulated in these will be basically the amount of gas which is being generated due to the propellant burning that is m dot g minus the amount of mass which is going out through the nozzle. That means, some of the mass will be accumulated in the combustion chamber right with the time as the time goes it will be accumulated. So, and if I take this as an ideal gas mass you know like then I can write down P v m mass is equal to P v by R t. And if I will assume the T c the chamber temperature to remain constant for a particular propellant right during the operation, then I can integrate that one that is you know V c by R t c d P c by d t plus P c R t c d V c by d t. Keep in mind that this is this one is what change in what you call change in the volume chamber volume per with respect to time and this burn change is due to what due to the burning of propellant. So, that will be basically if you look at it is what you call rho g into a b a p c n that means rho g a b right and r dot this is nothing but your r dot. So, this is the amount of change in volume with respect to time right and of course, uh, the per m g mass we have already derived here right and then this is for your this case for the nozzle. So, you will get this expression that means, if I look at this, this is basically if I take this portion over uh, this side, I will get V c divided by R t c d p c by d t is equal to a b because a b is common a p c n is common. So, rho p minus rho g minus a t p c gamma divided by root over r t c right. And if I will assume this to be steady state that means, this is 0 for steady state right d p c by d t is 0. So, if that is the case then what I will get that I will get a b a p c by n rho p minus rho g is equal to a t p c gamma divided root over r t c right. It is just simple under steady state condition. So, if I take this out I will get p c is equal to a b by a t a in the bracket rho p minus rho g divided by root over r t c power to the 1 1 minus 1 1 divided by 1 minus n right. So, if you look at here very simplification one can think of you know rho p you know rho p is very very greater than rho z. For example, if I take a propellant of solid propellant while will be density it will be something 150 kg per meter cube. If I look at gas density what it would be high temperature it will be very very low it will be maybe you know 0.2, 0 0.3 kg per meter because if we take ambient air you know no, no sorry it will be order of 1, one uh, kg per meter cube kind of thing because the pressure is high right. But at the same time you know temperature is high. So, if you look at it, it is very very small. So, one can neglect this term you know to simplify. So, with this I will stop over we will see how we can use this relationship and arrive at the thrust law that means, the variation of thrust with respect to time for different grain configurations.